Walt Disney board member Safra Katz has just decided to step down from the Walt Disney Company board and the Disney Company has eliminated her seat. Let's talk about why and how all of this relates to Nelson Peltz and Paramount here on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and here is my YouTube compatriot from not only That Park Place, but also That Game Place and the Culture Casino channel, Mr. Culture Casino. Mr. Culture, how you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm surprised. We've we've had a lot of surprises from Disney today. Yes, yes, we have. Um, now, this is the second breaking news item. So this one is going to be moving to, to, I don't know, there's just so much to get out right now. Let's talk about this. Oracle CEO Safra Katz is departing Disney's board of directors after six years. With that departure, Disney's board has reduced from 12 directors to 11. There are so many things going on here uh, and so many aspects to consider in this tweet. Uh, first of all, Scott Gustin, smiling face, nice, nice guy. Safra Katz has been on the Disney board for quite some time and has represented, I believe, one of the stronger voices on a board that we have often given a hard time for not being a very strong uh, voice against Bob Iger, not giving him resistance. Culture, do you have anything you want to throw in on that? No, there, there's definitely no resistance on that board whatsoever. The fascinating thing that, that I want to bring up for Safra Katz in particular is this story from January 17th of 2023. This would be the first proxy fight uh, between Nelson Peltz and the Disney company that started when Bob Chapek was CEO of the company. Peltz used Ike Perlmutter to contact specific board members, those being Safra Katz and Amy Chang. Perlmutter's case to Safra Katz. These are the points of contact that Ike Perlmutter and and Nelson Peltz had on the board initially in Perlmutter and Peltz's campaign to get Nelson Peltz a board seat uh, for the company. I don't think this was very well received by the board in general, and uh, Chapek took a softer touch than Bob Iger does. Bob Iger's being very strong, very denial, almost disrespectful uh, attack here, which probably created some of the issues with Nelson Peltz in general, despite the fact that Nelson Peltz never said that he wanted to replace Bob Iger. But taking away the unanimity of the board was essentially to Bob Iger, like taking away the CEO ship from Bob Iger. Is that, would you say that's a fair uh, yes. assessment culture? Yes, 100%. I'm with you. I'm with you so far. <laughs> now, um, you know a lot more about this than I do, culture. Do you want to give a little bit of a history on Safra Katz and her role as the Oracle CEO and why that might be important to the Disney company and in what's been changing? in the entertainment environment recently? Well, Safra Katz is obviously comes out of technology. She has a lot of experience uh, working her way up from Cisco to, to Oracle. She is a billionaires. Yes, she's a billionaire. And she has a lot of technology roots, which is something that Bob Iger would like to be attached to. He would like the Disney company to be attached to tech. He wants Disney to be a tech company, not the entertainment giant that they are. Or he wants people to think that they're also uh, a, a technology company, which they're really not. They use technology. They're not a tech company. No, yeah. I would agree. That's uh, that's yeah. definitely how Bob wants to be perceived so that he can move the stock price into that technology sector, even though this is a company that at its core makes entertainment and does good theme parks. Well, that entertainment has to be entertaining to be considered entertainment. And the good theme park aspect, well, they're fading theme parks that used to be good theme parks. The half-life on that uh, remains to be seen. Uh, but, but hey, I got a question for you, Culture. Who yeah. owns Oracle? Oh, that's Ellison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah that that big Larry, that Larry Ellison. I mean, it's a it's a it's a publicly held company, but it, it, Larry Larry Ellison started it. And, yes, right? uh, yeah, massive company, yeah. Uh, yeah. founded or or steered by Larry Ellison, yeah. and and the reason that El, the Ellison name is so important here is Safra Katz might have found herself with a little bit of a conflict of interest. Uh, here we go, a story out of the wrap. Uh, not only is Paramount uh, being bought by Skydance, but Larry Ellison uh, invests $6 billion in son David's Paramount takeover. Da David Ellison over here on oh. the right is the one in charge of Skydance and uh, Redbird Capital Partners. Uh, I'm going to say that's Larry Ellison's. Is that Larry Ellison's or is he just putting up $6 billion cash, out, you know, out of the couch cushions here? Yeah, he probably just, yeah, he probably just reached out into the couch cushions, pulled it out and said, you know what? 
let's go. We're gonna we're gonna fund the majority of this, and we're gonna go to Redbird Capital for the balance. So they're you know they they all in. I would say this is a this is an interesting move. It's interesting that Redbird's involved in this too. That was fascinating. Yes, yeah, yes, it is. And um, I'll also point out that uh, Iron Man two is uh, yet another Marvel uh, production under mm-hmm. John Favreau that has an influence of, obviously, Iron Man in some ways modeled after Elon Musk, not only mm-hmm. Elon Musk, but uh, modeled after Elon Musk. And then Larry Ellison is in Iron Man 2 in that final fight scene. First of all, it does take place in like the Oracle arena or something like that. But uh, the Japanese garden ambiance of that final battle there. Well, I love that final battle back to back Iron Man and War Machine. That was based off of some of Larry Ellison's design aesthetic there. But uh, yeah, so uh, Paramount, obviously a direct competitor to the Walt Disney Company, even though they're a teeny tiny little competitor here. Obviously, they're buying Paramount for $8 billion uh, yep. in, in whatever. And the Disney Company, it should be a $200 billion or more company, but I think right now that has faded down to uh, somewhere in the 150 range. I will uh, check on that here so we can confirm. But uh, no matter by the standard, um, Disney is 10 times the size of Paramount, uh, despite the fact that Paramount can come in and trounce them at the box office with something like a uh, Top Gun Maverick or something along those lines. This is, um, I don't want to say that they're not really competitors, but the the difference in size here and the difference of reach is uh, fascinating to mm-hmm. me oh what in the world am i missing why did they reduce the board seats culture uh wow because there's no way you would want to have an open board seat where you could make an argument for anybody to come in and replace her <laughs> i think that's pretty obvious right and again i mean this this woman has been incredibly successful throughout her career she's also it's unclear why they brought her in as a board member they have a lot of people who have zero entertainment experience that would include her but now she has an entertainment conflict with right. with disney somehow it's the wildest story ever and again with with as you pointed out the disney stock price dwindling down to uh 95 74 at this current moment and with the market cap dropping to 174 billion i would say uh yeah there's uh there's there's not there's a lot of weird happening with this thing right well now. i'm going i'm going to say this reduction of board seats is very specifically so that nelson peltz can't come in and say exactly. hey i want i want to go for that board seat right there that Safra Katz is uh exactly. exiting no matter who they put on that board which disney has been doing a better job of getting people that could steer the company on their board i'm not saying that Safra Katz wasn't qualified I, I from everything i hear that she's perfectly competent and qualified in the position there are definitely other board members where i would question that more like maybe mary Lena Lagomasino, head of the compensation committee, compensation being one of the biggest issues that shareholders have brought up against Bob Iger and it has probably caused them for the most part, those who have voted for Peltz, it's caused for the most part right there to vote for Peltz. Now, I really think that this is what they did in the past when uh, Susan Arnold stepped down from the board is they got rid of her seat and then gave the chairmanship to Mark Parker. Yeah, they added two board members and then uh, they eliminated one board seat and then added those two in. They they want to control. They want to fully control the board seats there at the Walt Disney Company. So this is a move very specifically to keep someone off the board. And I think anyone who's reasonable would conclude that that person is Nelson Peltz. Yes. If we're- if we're following the cycle, Disney, Nelson Peltz cashes out at around 120 a share or exits his proxy fight at 120 a share. This time he actually sold at about 120 a share and then yep. comes back in at about $80 a share. Now, again, no financial advice ever on None. the channel, except for the fact that most of the things that Bob Iger does at the Walt Disney Company seem to be, instead of pointed towards entertainment, instead of pointed towards building great theme parks, they seem to be around moving that stock price. Right here, October is where Nelson Peltz announced that he uh, was uh, was engaging in a proxy fight again with the Walt Disney Company, or maybe he announced shares at that point. A year earlier, it was about this same time that he made a similar announcement. It went all the way up here, and this this peak 
right here of around $125 a share. As soon as it was announced that Nelson Peltz had lost the proxy fight, we see this dip and it's continued to dip down to at current stock price, 95.74, 95.53 in uh, after hours trading. Yep. Again, I'm not trying to wow anybody by pointing out no. words on the stock chart here, but Bob has about $15 a share before he's he's reached the clear threshold that if Nelson Peltz puts the same amount of money back in, he's invested the same amount and come in with more shares in the Walt Disney Company. So, Culture, do you have anything you want to add before we wrap this up? Uh, just that it's very, it's very obvious that, that Iger is terrified of any board seat being occupied by somebody who would challenge him publicly, let alone privately. But if the, somebody who would challenge him publicly and reveal that perhaps his best, in, the investor's best interests are not being represented. Right, right. Because uh, the board voting in unison, they used to view that as strength. There are instances in Bob Iger's book, even, where he said, do you want to re-vote and say we have unison? And he acknowledged that, no, it's better that there be some dissent on there so people not think that we are all, I forget the word he used, but uh, he, he wants at least the illusion of conflict within the board on some level so that not everybody is agreeing with each other if that tends to be a bad decision. Bob Chapek's renewal for three years early, by the way, an early renewal of Bob Chapek for three years was a unanimous board vote, as well as the vote to kick Bob Chapek off the board just a few months later. So unanimity is not necessarily the strength of the Walt Disney Company at this point. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Culture. Everybody go check out the Culture Casino channel. And of course, Culture is doing the lion's share of the work over there on that game place with an amazing crew that includes uh, Nolan Thunder, Space Dave, 2000, Spencer Bakuli. Uh, let's see, Marvin the Movie Monster is over there. I'm over there sometimes. And Loki from Loki's Mornings of Mischief. Uh, a lot of great stuff going over there on that game place. Of course, stay tuned here to that park place because we will be covering any developments on the board. Uh, maybe we'll cover that Paramount stuff soon. Uh, like this video if you like this video and consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.